episode of Not For The Weak Minded. This is a special on Oak Island. I hope you enjoy. The Curse of Oak Island, the top 25 theories. 25, the Captain Kidd Theory. Captain William Kidd was a renowned 17th century pirate in the Caribbean who supposedly buried treasure on Oak Island. This theory, composed by Harold T. Wilkins from a book he wrote called Captain Kidd and His Skeleton Island, the discovery of a strange secret hidden for 266 years has a map inside which upon closer inspection is in the South Pacific it also states that it is from 1669 and that there is treasure buried beneath a tree Oak Island Freemason historian Charles Barkhouse and author, investigative journalist, Randall Sullivan, visit South Shore Genealogy Society in Lunenburg, where they find a map with Kidd's treasure written on it. A closer inspection of this map shows the names Barkhouses written on it, and perhaps this will tie in later as we continue. 24. The Sir Francis Drake Theory Sir Francis Drake sailed the seas in the late 16th century who became a pirate during the time between 1577 and 1588 who was supposed to have amassed the amount of treasure which was hidden on Oak Island. Area historian Paul Speed has researched Drake who is a mysterious character where perhaps after his death from dysentery was supposedly buried on Oak Island with his treasure. 23. The Cathar Theory Proposed by Kathleen McGowan is that a devout group of Christians held secret relics at Montsegar in southern France, which during the 13th century, in 1244, Pope Innocent IV declared them heretics. But this resulted in the treasure being handed to the Knights Templar to hide. Now before we go on to the next slide, I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to talk about this symbol you see in front of you. Now I did on my t-shirt design um, and in a previous video state that I was going to try and do a video about the double axe symbol and its, and its dualistic meaning. However, in order to actually understand and um, my interpretation um, you have to see a certain bit of information which I've looked at and I have to put that in a way um, to make you understand why this is actually a symbol of protection that these people during earlier periods were actually the protectors of the human race and that their organization through time has been corrupted and this is a symbol of the gods. The double axe theory, you know, theory symbol is based upon rock carvings found across the earth and um, ancient myth mythological stories, but also to do with the time of the giants. It's a very complicated story indeed. Um, we, we are facing when, when it's particularly not told to us truthfully and that the last 300 years particularly um, certain things have been erased from our memories so these knights at one point were the protectors of this world from the world below and unfortunately they have failed they got corrupted they had to keep moving away but through time they got caught and so this is a part of my interpretation about Oak Island and it's going to take a lot longer to explain the symbol so please bear with me moving on 
A Knight Templar himself, Toby Doppler, suggests that the island might have Templar burials, that these burials are typically on a plate with a sword in the middle and no names. This theory, they suggest, could relate to Nolan's Cross center face stone marker, which you'll see for real later. 22. The Maria Antoinette Theory. This theory comes from former president Franklin D. Roosevelt. His grandfather, Warren Delano, was an investor in the Truro Company who was in charge of a large scale excavation in 1909. At the age of 27 years old, Franklin D. Roosevelt spent time treasure hunting on Oak Island. At the FDR Presidential Library in New York, historian Paul Troutman discovered a letter interview with Duncan Harris. In this letter, near the bottom, it states that he believes it to be the lost jewels of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. It further states that these jewels were handed to Lady-in-Waiting and that she went to Canada close to Campo Bello. So, here is Campo Bello Island. And if you know Canada, you'll know that this is nowhere near Oak Island, and so can rule out this theory. As, you know, to do with Oak Island at least. 21. The Shakespeare Theory. Shakespeare needs no introduction. However, he has many hidden secrets surrounding him, which brings us to the next author, documentary filmmaker. Peter Amundsen who openly says he himself is a Norwegian Freemason. His theory is based on hidden codes, strange capital letters, misspelled words, and missing page numbers in Shakespeare's first work in 1623 that points to Oak Island. He believes that the Tree of Life has been left by the Templars where it could lead to lost volumes and manuscripts of Shakespeare. Carrying on with another Freemason connection, Next is Sir Francis Bacon, who financed Shakespeare's work in 1623 and was close associates. Author and historian Randall Sullivan believes Bacon was the mastermind belief behind Oak Island. In the book published after his death in 1626 called Silver Savarum, it speaks about creating a perpetual spring. In Bacon's own words, one of the best ways to instruct people is to create a treasure hunt. 19. The Dig Straight Down Theory When Daniel McGuinness and friends discovered the money pit in 1795, they hit a series of oak logs in 10 feet intervals reaching 90 feet. As far as the rest of the story goes, if you've been watching the show, you should know. 18. The Digger Giant Hole Theory After hundreds of years of tension, by the time the 1960s had arrived, at least 20 different searcher shafts were dug around the money pit area. Introducing Robert Dunfield, a geologist slash treasure hunter who decided to remove a massive hole 150 feet deep by 90 feet plus wide in the hope he would hit something near the money pit area. This material was then used to try and block the drains, which was discovered by other people before him, with no success forever changing the landscape more to a point where the original money pit became lost. 17. The Blankenship Fair A legend of Oak Island, who has spent decades of hard labour and work with his hands, who has shown, through using dowsing, that things are certainly down beneath the surface of 4 hole 10 x Now I'm sure he had plenty of ideas about who built Oak Island, but sadly, as he is no longer with us, dying at the age of 95 years old, this is just a tribute. 16. The Jewel Cipher Theory is it a secret that secret societies use different signs and symbols as a language? 
amateur cryptographer and researcher Daniel Ronstam's theory is that the 90 foot stone has a potential dualistic meaning to the message its first translation by Reverend A.T. Campton in 1949 suggests the following 40 feet below 2 million pounds are buried he suggests 80 feet guide corn long narrow C and let drain F that this could be how to block the drain to get the 2 million below 15 the money pit is just a decoy theory Laverne Johnson a Freemason who came in 1959 thought the money pit was a decoy and that other ground markers was the key to finding the treasure for example Nolan's cross Fast forward to today and his relatives Sean and Mike Harold who are both engineers believe their ancestors theory Subsequently through investigation nothing came from this theory 14 the star map theory this is a never theory with a massive freemason connection freemason astrophysicist travis taylor has a theory based on the drawing of hiram abed here he describes hidden meanings about freemason symbology and state that the stars are the key he also states that nearly everyone who has been involved with oak island have been Freemasons. As you see, Charles Barkhouse wearing the square and compass of, you guessed it, Freemasonry. From Hiram Abiff's illustration, he proposes in order to find the treasure, we must think as above, so below. So, this is an example of Travis's star map imposed on Oak Island. And here's your host, Matty Blake. Throughout the show itself, he does this hand gesture, which is a language that tells other Freemasons he himself is a Freemason. 13. The Nolan Theory Owned by Mr. W. Chapel during the 1950s, Fred Nolan, a land surveyor, sought permission to survey Oak Island in 1958. After access and many years of survey of the island, Fred was convinced that to find the treasure, he had to work out the stones on the surface. Here, he found strange carvings on many rock surfaces across the island, including, you guessed it, more Freemasonry symbols such as the G. After many years of keeping his secrets, thanks to rivalry with Dan Blankenship, he gave them very important information that could solve this complex puzzle. 12. The Sunken Ship Theory Continuing on with Fred Nolan's surveys and discoveries is his proposal that a ship was sunk in the swamp. During the show and during his explorations, he found wood which must have come from a ship in the swamp. His proposal is that at one point Oak Island itself was in fact two islands created as one. That this small divide was used to create a barrier from the sea to sink a ship laden with treasure. Now this is my image taken from Google Earth. Um, as you can see, there's definitely things that are in the lake, including what looks to be a very large stone, which Dave Petter's theory believes is related to the Mercy Point, the Mercy Stone, which is the key to unlocking the treasure. Interesting, there are other things and features in the swamp, and that they found wood parts of ships right so there's not a doubt but this is a man-made structure and that this at one point was two islands created to bury something it's just who and when buried it and why is the next question 
11. The Little Marsh Ferry Our next ferry is an island near the shore of Lunenburg that has some interesting features. Treasure hunter and landowner Gary Clayton has spent 10 plus years since 1988 surveying, drilling and excavating the island to discover some interesting findings. His research suggests that in 1740, artefacts of the Royal Society was given to Admiral Lord George Anson, who was given a map commissioned by King Charles II in 1675 to hide treasure in the New World. So this image was taken from the show itself, and this is Little Mash Island, just off the shore of Lunenburg. Can you see anything of interest? What about this boat shaped feature right here? Not perfect, but you get it right. You can see it. So here's another shot from the show. I suppose. So next is my own images. And as you can see, I'm going to take you through from 2011 to 2019 because from this angle that is as far as I can go back, um, which is shocking really. Two thousand and fourteen, and again you can see that there's a boat-shaped feature right here. But also, perhaps there is one right next to it there too. So there's two ships. That one is larger, it's wider, but you can't see it other than in this image. So it's deeper and it's deeper. There's another boat feature here. Let me remove that. And so this is a part of the man-made island and part, you know, not what we call bedrock. So this island is certainly man-made and it's quite interesting that it might relate to you know George Anson coming here and building this and 10 the Portuguese Templar Ferry if there are many symbols found just on Oak Island alone one can imagine many more to be discovered which brings us to the next ferry Terry DeVoe historian and expert in petroglyphs throughout Canada and the USA has discovered more symbols on a rock in Overton, Nova Scotia. He believes this to be a Portuguese Templar cross and two important Mi'kmaq symbols of their belief system together to propose that it signifies a friendship treaty. He also states that this has nothing to do with Sinclair's journey during the 1300s. However, according to some he was worshipped by the Mi'kmaq as a god called Glushka. Number 9. The Havana Ferry This ferry involves a former slave who won his freedom and lived on Oak Island during the late 1700s. Albeit this story has something to do with him in regard to him becoming extremely wealthy from being on the island, it has to do with the connection that he found treasure brought to Nova Scotia after the sacking of Havana during the Seven Years War between the Spanish and the Brit and the English. It is said that Havana was a depository for gold taken from South America by the conquistadors and perhaps brought to Oak Island, the former slave owner being Samuel Ball. Number 8. The Aztec Gold Theory this brings us to a never possible South American connection. Retired miner, author and historian John O'Brien has researched the work of the Aztec Empire where he has found a connection to mining. 
His research suggests that around 800 AD, a Mayan ship found Pelicor's clay, or blue clay, which to the Mesoamericans was worth more than gold. He suggests that the South Shore shaft was established for mining of the blue clay and that the Aztecs secretly brought jewels to the island. Number seven, the Christopher Columbus theory. He is a never prominent Freemason who has been proven to not be the first to find the Americas. Theorist Jeff Urban from his research believes Christopher Columbus brought the Ark of the Covenant with him before Sir Henry Sinclair secured a safe route as a scout in 1398. Columbus himself was related to the Sinclairs which shows a clear connection to the Templars. That his father-in-law, a Spanish nobleman named Bartholomew Parastrello, was a Grand Master in the Knight of Christ. He is sure that Christopher Columbus was aware of the island and thinks that the Templars smuggled the, ar the artifacts out of Jerusalem and took it to Scotland where later it was taken to the New World in the 1500s. 6. The Knights Baronet Theory this order was created during the reign of King James I of England, who was also King James VI of Scotland, to create a hundred towns around Nova Scotia by giving titles, land to them and their descendants in exchange for 300 marks or 50,000 US dollars today. During his reign, he asked the Scots for his help in, in war, which they asked for a new Scotland. The plan was to convince Scottish clan chiefs to move to Canada in 1625 after helping England in battles. Author and historian James McQuiston, after researching North American descendants of the Knights Templar, is convinced that they took treasure from Jerusalem in the 14th century. He suspects that descendants have been depositing riches over, he over here for the next 400 years. Discovered in 1897 by William Chapel and Frederick Blair during their drilling and excavations where they pierced what they described as a concrete and wooden treasure vault at 153 feet, this parchment brought up had no smearing of Indian ink which shows it was protected by water proofing materials before being brought up to the surface by the drill bit. Number 5. The Nolan Cross Theory Researcher Judy Rudbush, Gretchen Cornwall and John Temple have come together to reveal their research in connection to the Knights Templar, the Holy Land and Oak Island. The book, written by Gretchen Cornwall, The Secret Dossier of a Knight Templar of the San Griel, suggests that the headstone of Nolan Cross is a Templar signpost, that the skull and bones is a Templar origin and it originates from the time of the Crusades. They argue that as great engineers they would have left stone key markers, symbols and other information at Oak Island and other places in Europe. To continue, they hypothesize that the, to solve the puzzle and to find the treasure, precise mathematics must be used with Nolan's cross. 4. The Enochian Chamber Theory The Book of Enoch is a significant ancient piece of literature which is highly regarded by the Freemasons. Author and historian Kathleen McGowan believes the cache of treasure, including the Ark, came through the medieval town of Montsegar and that the treasure was taken to the New World through Templar connections. Templar expert and author Alan Butler's theory has to do with what the McGuinness excavation first came across where they found a platform of flat stones which he believes to be a threshing floor. He further states that it is an important Freemason tradition used to trample wheat which came to represent spiritual separation of good and evil. His evidence suggests it is used in the foundations of holy structures such as Solomon's Temple. He has a theory that the money pit was a copy of the chambers of the Enoch 
or Solomon's Temple and an attempt to rebuild New Jerusalem. Enoch is said to be the great grandfather of the biblical Noah. He himself built a structure underground so knowledge would survive. 3. The Xena Halpern Theory This research has brought valuable evidence towards the movements of the Templars through time by providing physical evidence with dates. Based in New York, researcher Xena Halpern's maps discovered shows that the Templars ventured to America 400 years before Christopher Columbus. This map, dated 1179, shows that Oak Island and subsequently Canada was already mapped with details before this date map of 1179. The discovery of a potential Phoenician cross and lead from an abandoned mine after the 14th century, which originated in the south of France, pushes all things currently taught since birth historically about the founding of America. 2. The Rochefoucauld Theory These maps hold significant value as the name which is written in the corner has historical Templar connection to Oak Island. Team historian researcher Doug Crow found a ship's log with eight pages about an advance of his French fleet in 1746 which came to take back Arcadia. This French armada had came to seize British territory under the command of Duke d'Anville, who brought masses amounts of treasure with him. This family can trace its ancestry back to the 10th century France and are a powerful family of nobles which had close ties to the Knights Templars. Duke d'Anville's real name was Jean-Baptiste Louis Frédéric de Rochefoucauld. In the letter it states that due to heavy amounts of treasure on board it is unwise to engage in any circumstances. They agree to dig a pit and bury the treasure where they should make a secret entrance to the shore via tunnels. Now before moving on to number one, I would like to show you a few images which I have captured from Google Earth and have presented in other videos. If you see in this image, I'll just get the highlighter, that there is a cut channel here and that there is land of which this frog island which is this one is connected to now there are things in which you can see with your eyes that absolutely prove without a shadow of a doubt that there is ancient culture here which they have not really acknowledged historically in terms of what is being taught today. Here is another close up of the same shot where you can see evidence of engineering where this river channel has been created. Now we've all focused on Oak Island but the next section is going to be about Frog Island next to it where if you looked closely you would see that there was treasure marked as buried here now Fred Nolan's theory that this was two islands that then got created to become one island is very tangible when you look at the evidence and so Frog Island I believe is exactly the same so we're going to show you now pictures to do with Frog Island. Now, as you can see from those images already, that there is some kind of separation between these two land masses and that there is evidence of disturbances in the soil. It is self-evident that there might be now treasure at, on this island too. Is it booby-trapped? 
I don't know. All I know is, is that they have a technique here which has been replicated over and over again throughout Nova Scotia and that I have evidence to show you later that shows that many islands have been created to hide treasure. So without further ado, thank you very much if you're all still listening. Here is theory number one, the Founding Fathers theory. Brought forward by Bruce Lindo and Justin Kennedy and his brother, Court Lindo, who is a historian and researcher. Their theory is that there is a connection between the Knights Templars and the founders of the United States of America. That this connects directly back to the family of de Rochefoucauld, Duke de Anville's son, Louis Alexander de Rochefoucauld, and his association with Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, who were both Freemasons. They suggest these first families of New England had been funded by treasure deposited on Oak Island to help fund the Revolutionary War of Independence. Now during one episode last season, they discussed the symbol created by known Freemason George Washington called the right to appeal or rebel. I have done a video on this called Oak Island Masons Exposed, 13 Royal Colonies and the right to revolt against the creation. And so, this is where, for so many today, the mystery of this island begun, with the writing of this article in the Reader's Digest. The question is, is David MacDonald a Freemason? Is the MacDonalds a Scottish clan that goes back to Templar origins? So, in summary, 25. The map in the book presented was not Oak Island, but rather somewhere in the South Pacific. However, in finding a map with Kish treasure written, it, is, it still keeps this theory alive. Depending on the age of the map, it could also be based on hearsay. 24. Logically, pirates being pirates, they would steal any treasure including Sir Francis Drake's after burial. As he died in the Caribbean of dysentery, it is very unlikely that he would be buried on Oak Island in the first place. 23. This one is very plausible and is still in the game. However, it will, it will have a different interpretation due to Freemason temporal lies on the television. 22. As already shown previously, this theory has no relevancy as Campo Bello is nowhere near Oak Island. How many Freemasons does it take to find the treasure? 21. As stated previously, many things are not mentioned about his character and subsequent works. Petter's theory is half based on something tangible, however it is not the lost works of Shakespeare in which may have been deposited, but rather ancient manuscripts of significant historical value by people earlier. 20. As stated, it was Bacon who funded Shakespeare's first print in 1623, where Petter has decoded a message to seek Oak Island. There is no doubt that Bacon was in knowledge of something important being here as it was written in code just like today still via other formats by the same people. As for Bacon being the mastermind, I highly doubt it based on current evidence. 19. This island has a deep connection to a time in which today many are unaware due to it being erased by the Templar Freemasons over the last three centuries or more. As I have become aware of other hidden knowledge, it may be that this certain parts of the story which is fabricated. This is a very complex story which spans more, many more centuries than currently being spoken about by these Templars on the television. 18. A great example of why archaeological practices were introduced. In my opinion, these people are hiding something from everyone, and that as millionaires, they can afford to, to call in a team of professional archaeologists to help excavate and find more evidence, not just digging holes. Due to his massive excavation, many things was lost, including the location of the mysterious money pit, which could have been something else instead. 
What have they covered up so far on the show itself? Are these Freemasons not pirates? 17. Is this Legend of Oak Island a Freemason too? He did not propose any theory during the show, but rather was a tribute due to his death this year. Here is a question. If the Templars, circa 1500 plus, built this contraption, why is it that it's taken them 300 years up to today with great difficulty to solve, to solve something which is proposed to be built by themselves? Surely they would have the answers, right? So, another question. Who is hidden knowledge from the Templars today and controls its organisation? A key to unlocking this great puzzle is the concept of duality. 16. Do secret societies have hidden languages? Is hand gestures a form of conversation or message to other initiated? Translations of texts over the years, particularly Sumerian and Egyptian, shows that language itself is dualistic. Today, the same applies. We must read things literally and allegorically to fully understand the real meanings. Does the 90 foot stone help to prove that the Templars were aware of this knowledge? 15. Laverne Johnson is one of many who theorised that the engraved stones laid down across the island was the key to unlocking the treasure. As for his hypothesis, based on what I saw in the show, I believe it did not conspire to any results which ends this theory completely. 14. Another Freemason with his own theory based on the Masonic Templar teachings of Hiram Abeth, that as, ab as above, so below. Let's be honest, there is more signs and symbols in that drawing which if expressed would be an entire video by itself as each has two meanings, one bad and one good. His theory is still ongoing, I believe, as many markers were discovered on the island. How many maps to the treasure? How much treasure has been buried elsewhere in the New World? Is ancient artifacts from a time never spoken about in Canada treasure? 13 and 12 Fred Nolan's theories about treasure being on the island has credence based on his surveying of the entire island, in particular the swamp area where he found evidence that the island itself was formed by two islands created for a purpose to sink treasure. His theory rests on working out the codes of the carvings and placement of the stones across the island. His work is the most important of them all, in my opinion, to solve this mystery. Gary Clayton's research is interesting when taking into consideration the things which can be seen from aerial observations through time. I think you can see there is a clear ship outline which could be the same size as a schooner. His research suggests that Little Marsh Island is man-made and that this may have connections to an English Admiral Lord George Anson coming here in the 1740s. 10. Terry DeVoe's research into other areas in Nova Scotia has shown that throughout Canada there is connections to European secret societies carved into stone. It is plausible that this indeed is a Portuguese Templar cross and that in its entirety represents a friendship between the natives and Europeans. However, who and when this journey took place is still debatable in terms of the Portuguese. He is convinced this symbol has nothing to do with Sinclair's journey in the late 1300s. However, this does not mean he did not come here as the local tribes supposedly worshipped him as a god called Glushgap. 9. As this show has shown, this island has massive connections to Freemasonry and the Knights Templar. Samuel Ball becoming very wealthy brings many more questions as to what he had discovered on the island. Pirate treasure by chance or something else which was told for him to do by others? 8. This theory fits nicely into the story of Oak Island as the discovery of an earlier visitor from South America who found blue clay and might have mined the South Shore shaft which later was repurposed by Knights Templars who modified the island further. It could be what is hidden is of Mayan origin. However, the human bones suggest otherwise as they were from Europe and Middle Eastern descent. 7. He was not the first to discover America. Can we at least change this in our history books, please? A Freemason doing the same symbols which is in plain sight today on the television. He is also wearing the black and white. 
Did he bring something to the new world with him after being guided by others before him? Like Sinclair? As we have discussed during this theory, Nova Scotia was founded when King James I of England granted Scottish chief titles and land deeds for them and their descendants as they participate in English wars. Now, if you remember during the first clip I mentioned the bark houses are on the map. Do these two correspond? Is the bark houses a noble family in England? 5. Now let's get the story straight. The skull and bone symbols is of Templar origin. Yale University? Did they find the Ark of the Covenant? Other archaeological research produced by Ron Wyatt under the Temple Mount says otherwise. Did they go to Oak Island? Absolutely. But when and under what premise? To hide from bad people significant dangerous artifacts of power or to hide for later things taken from good people to use for themselves? Who killed the Cathars? Who orchestrated the Crusades? Symbols is power. 4. I can see a halo, halo, halo. This theory is added in to talk about Masonic traditions truthfully so you can know their ways but has nothing to do with Oak Island being a new Jeru Salem. Solomon's temple has been reconstructed in America and there you will find a freshing floor for sure. What building is this? Is there any other more examples in England and Europe? 3 and 2. A physical map with a date of 1179 and name matching historical records goes a long way to prove it could have been this 10th century elite French noble family who had ties with the Cathars that exported a special sacred cargo of relics such as manuscripts and the Ark of the Covenant to Oak Island. Does this mean it was them which constructed Oak Island? as there are symbols of power during a time when the houses of power are under siege by others with bad intentions to use it, or is it even older and is only that they were aware of it during these times that something is buried here of significant importance by people before them of different culture as, as proposed by another theory. There is another theory of which I'm not going to propose now but is part of this story and it goes back further. 1. The founding fathers theory is to prove the Templars founded America to continue a great perception about ancient history, recent history, geological time and cosmological principles to create a new world order of sin. They have not told us the truth about early secret societies which are associated with the knowledge of the cross and places of power which slowly have taken over been taken over by corrupted spirits through time. How this knowledge relates to a one world culture of peace that lasted a thousand years and how it has been used today against creation by doing it their way instead through emulation of the technological creation. They speculate that the founding fathers with the help of the French nobles treasure on Oak Island helped pay for the American War of Independence. This is a massive conspiracy based on Freemason lies. To conclude, we can eliminate the following theories, and these theories are still viable. Is there other theories not included? Absolutely. Now, if we look at all the evidence presented so far, we can, through logical arguments, eliminate many of those still viable above. How far does this story really originate? Is there information you need? to actually solve this puzzle which they know that you do not? The answer is yes. The next video I will produce about this subject will be theories that involve other groups of people who travel to the New World who have connections to the Knights Templar. As you can see by these theories, many different people over the centuries came to the New World to hide treasure. Due to this factor, I have found supporting evidence that will show you many more examples of Oak Island type construction throughout Canada. So if you'd like to see more evidence and proof that you've been lied to your whole entire lives and that there, you know, please comment, like, share and subscribe for more to come.